that could not be here tonight. So tonight we're going to get some education from our uh, finance director. We're going to hear about some of our options of how we can handle the capital plan funding. Uh, but we won't be deliberating or deciding tonight. Uh, and we will do that at the next public meeting where we're all here. Uh, and before we get into the agenda, I would like to make an announcement. Um, today we received the written resignation from Commissioner R. Um, from his position as Commissioner, as 7th Ward Commissioner. I'm going to add Bob, ask Bob Zinkowski to read that letter for the residents at home who are watching this meeting. If you don't mind reading that. Um, it is dated uh, November 6, 2017. It's addressed to myself, his township manager. It says, Dear Mr. Zinkowski, the purpose of this letter is to provide written confirmation of my decision to resign as the commissioner of the 7th Ward, Radnor Township, effective immediately. First and foremost, I apologize for the personal mistakes I have made and the embarrassment I have caused that has damaged the public's trust. I am mindful of the distraction, the criminal allegations against me have created for the administration of government within the township. I apologize specifically to the constituents of the 7th Ward my neighbors and the township I have served for almost two years. My immediate resignation is to allow me to focus on my own personal rehabilitation, to allow my colleagues on the Board of Commissioners to work on the issues facing the township, and to provide for the residents of the 7th Ward to be adequately represented by my replacement. Sincerely, Philip M. R. Thank you, Bob. So to have that take effect, this board needs to officially uh, recognize and accept the resignation. And so I'd like to ask if any of my colleagues would like to make that motion. So moved. I'll second it. Okay, is there any <coughs> discussion or comment at the board level? Any staff comment? Any public comment? Sure, public comment. Is there a place that we should stand for this? I see that we've been brought up here because the Planning Commission apparently takes precedent over this elected board of commissioners. Should I stand anywhere in particular? Any place, then, because it's being picked up. Oh, very good. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, as I understand it, based on this on this press conference, uh, there may be more charges now against Phil R. based on information that was provided. And uh, Mr. Zinkowski just read a resignation letter, which, in my opinion, absolutely reeks of guilt from this disgusting criminal pervert talking about my mistakes. Okay, not that these charges are meritless or groundless, or I need this opportunity to think about uh, my strategy on these unfair charges, but no, my mistakes and my personal rehabilitation, because that's apparently what it's about. Not the apparently thousands of children who were sexually exploited by this monster, but no, this is really about Phil R, making sure that Phil R gets Phil R's head in order. Regardless, in case this question was not asked on October 9th, 2017, did you, Commissioner Higgins, you, Commissioner Schaefer, or you, Commissioner Nagel, who apparently is finding something very interesting in your personal electronic device right now, know the criminal, uh, that uh, criminal R, you know what, I'll use that, criminal R was being criminally investigated for child pornography. Last time I asked this question at a Board of Commissioners meeting, I got no substantive response from any of you. All I heard was Commissioner Higgins saying, don't sneer at me. Apparently, sneering causes umbrage for Commissioner Higgins, okay? I want to know right now whether this board heard the three people that voted to block Phil R's removal as president, whether you heard prior to October 9, 2017, that Phil R was being criminally investigated for child pornography. All of you are avoiding my eyes right now. I understand it's uncomfortable, but wow. That would be a difficult decision to mess up. That Phil R being criminally investigated for child pornography was not, according to at least three people on this board, if you were provided with that information, a reason to remove him as president. We've heard quite a lot in the last couple weeks that it is difficult in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to remove an elected official from office. It's hard, really it is. Nevertheless, I give Commissioner Luke Clark and, and Commissioner Booker a lot of credit for getting an attorney and attempting to put pressure on this man to step down, which he finally does on the eve of an election. But I think the public is entitled to know the three people that on October 9, 2017 said, Phil R. is our president and we are blocking any attempt to remove him as president, whether you three will come forward and either say yay or nay. 
Yes, we were told he was being investigated for child pornography. No, we were not told. On social media, it has certainly been tweeted that this board was informed prior to October 9th. And as I stated at previous meetings, it would <coughs> astonish me if you were all so incurious to hear that Phil R is being criminally investigated, that's the end of the matter. We don't have any questions. It would shock me. So I will, again, with cameras apparently rolling to each of you, Commissioner Nagel, on or before October 9, 2017, did you hear Phil R was being investigated for child pornography? No comment. Commissioner Schaefer, with the cameras rolling, did you hear prior to October 9, 2017 that Phil R was being investigated for child pornography and nevertheless voted on October 9, 2017 to keep him as president? No answer. Commissioner Higgins, I'm not going to sneer at you. I'm not going to use any sarcasm towards you. Did you hear prior to October 9, 2017 that Phil R was being investigated for child pornography? No comment. This, ladies and gentlemen, even in this small room upstairs, which we are apparently forced to be in because the Planning Commission and Advisory Board is meeting tonight, this is not leadership. This is not accountability. These are people who are apparently very upset that they made a political decision and are being called on it. And I would ask everybody to continue to ask this question politely until you get a straightforward answer. <coughs> I will close my comments by saying thank you very much for the Township staff and our fine police department for apparently finding out even more information about Phil R and continuing to protect the public to the extent possible. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Uh, do I stand here? Or, um, so first of all, a uh, couple thank yous to pass out. I want to thank Mr. Zinkowski for taking the action that you took. I think it sounds like you sort of took did that a little bit spontaneously, and if that's the case, then maybe the township should implement the policy that those kinds of materials are automatically checked when they're turned in, and also it seems like maybe it would be a good idea to subject them either to random checks or something like that, as is standard practice in a lot of companies that do issue uh, laptops and iPads and other things like that. I also want to thank the uh, police. Uh, I live in the seventh ward. I live uh, pretty close to where Phil R lives, and we just got through Halloween, and obviously that was probably more than any other day of the year with someone like Debbie living in the neighborhood. That's a time to be concerned. And as far as I'm aware, we got through it without incident. In got through it without incident. So I want to say thank you to all of the fine officers in Radnor who helped us get through that without incident. Uh, I want to thank Commissioner Clark. I honestly didn't know that much about you before I started to come into these meetings a couple weeks ago, but <coughs> if the leadership you took on this with the action that you filed with Commissioner Booker is any indication of what you're going to keep doing, then keep doing what you're doing. And I also want to thank commis uh, no, Commissioner uh, Mr. Rice that um, the uh, Mr. Zinkowski indicated earlier that you kept the pressure on Mr. R to resign for a long time, and I want to thank you for your efforts on that. And with regard to where we go from here, I just want to encourage everybody in Radnor Township, this is a reason why you have to get out and vote. Phil R was elected in an off-year election. We know that turnout's often down during off-year elections. You have to get out and vote in every election. Every election matters. and. If the elections aren't getting you the results that you want, you also have to go to your committees, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you're not satisfied with the candidates you're getting, because that's who's picking the candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well said. Well Julie Annapolis. Well Sarah Pelly, different topic. As you all know, uh, we have a community garden at Skunk Hollow. We just finished yeah, our seat. Sarah, with this right now, we're accepting a comment on, we have a motion on the floor. Oh, all so, right. So um, uh, we'll have public comment after we have this motion. Fine. Okay. Is there anybody else who has comment about the motion on the floor? All right, I'll go ahead and call the vote. All those in favor um, on the for in favor of the go motion ahead. to accept the resignation of Phil R, say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? It passes four to nothing. Uh, and I want to take a moment to um, acknowledge and thank our solicitor who worked pretty relentlessly to make this happen um, and as expeditiously as possible. Uh, so thank you, Solicitor Rex. Thank you. 
Uh, so now we have a vacancy on the board. And as I understand it, the process we would all, I'm sure I speak of for everyone on this board and everyone in our township, we would like to move as swiftly as possible to replace, to, uh, to appoint someone to replace Commissioner R so that the seventh ward can be represented as quickly as possible, especially given the important discussions we have coming up in terms of the budget. Uh, so I would like to, uh, to make the suggestion to my colleagues that we, we uh, solicit and ask for interested residents in the seventh ward who would be interested in serving as commissioner temporarily until the next election to submit their desire to um, our manager, Robert Zinkowski, um, along with your resume, and we will go ahead and begin interviewing interested residents as soon as next week. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if, the, if it's effective today, we have to appoint by December 6th, I guess, right? Um, or December 5th. So are we going to have the interviews at the 27th meeting? Is that what we're going to do? Or the 13th? We or can have them at the 13th. And as, the 13th. as soon as we find a candidate for, with, that we all agree upon, we can appoint. So it could conceivably happen on the 13th. Sure. If someone steps forward who we all agree on, or a majority agrees on. Sure. So um, I'd like to go ahead and put that out there, unless there's objection, that anyone from the 7th Ward who is interested I believe you have to have lived in the seventh ward for one year um, to go ahead and send your interest and your resume into the township to Bob Zinkowski, uh, and we will contact you to have an interview. And I think you have to have been a registered voter above and beyond residing okay. there. I think you have to have been registered for a year, right? So just a little. So we will start that process immediately, and hopefully we will be able to come together and appoint something to somebody swiftly. All right, we will go ahead and proceed with our business tonight. Uh, I'd like to start out the meeting with regular public participation for anybody who would like to give public comment. Uh, yeah. The Skunk Hollow Community Garden has completed their sixth year. We did our usual Saturday collection and this year the value of our the food we gave to Loaves and Fishes in Prospect Park was $3,609. It's all done uh, comparing it to the price points at Mom's Organic Market in Bryn Mawr. And what's really interesting is the price point really has not changed over a six-year period. Wow. I'm really amazed at the consistency of prices. Along with that, as we did last year, we are going to have a Thanksgiving drive to buy hams and turkeys for their residents. There's 650 people who are on an official Department of Agriculture accepting subs you know, subsequent health. That's not a really good way of describing it, but they're entitled to the state to receive it. And last year, I made an announcement at the Board of Commissioners meeting, and some people were very generous, so we are able to give more. So if anybody would like to donate towards it, they can make a check to the Skunk Hollow Community Garden and send it to Susan Stern at 202 Midland Avenue in Wayne, and Barb and Tom Schrodenbach and I will be buying the food and also giving them some money. It's an extremely uh, successful program down there at Loaves and Fishes, and the people they're helping are well-deserved. So then the other thing I really don't know a whole lot about, but Laura Luker, who's president of Radnor Conservancy, wrote Roberta Williams today, something about the township recycling the political signs. This apparently is very well vetted in Montgomery County and residents can take their signs to a number of places depending on where in all of Montgomery County you live. I don't know the details of it, but if people will just not throw their signs with the metal supports in the trash, somebody is going to figure out how to keep them, where to keep them, where to turn them in. But I was asked to announce that tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and uh, congratulations. That's really extraordinary what you've done with that farm, and uh, we all appreciate it. Um, last um, Board of Commissioners meeting, Leslie Morgan, I, um, 
I, I said a lot of stuff, but one of the things was a prompt I was on. I understand that our manager had something to say after I left the meeting. That's fine, Bob. You can always t talk to me when I'm in the meeting. Um, but my, um, I did put in two right to know requests about a month ago. I always do my right to know requests in person. The first right to know request was to understand why the Democratic Party is able to have meetings in the Radnor Shire room without potentially a rental stream because other people get rentals, you know, we, we charge things. And, you know, this comes into play with the willows and how much we're going to get and how much demand there is for community groups. And that's fine that a community group wants to do that, but are they paying? I asked for that. I filled out my right to know request. I've done this over five years. I don't, I probably do two or three a year. I'm not a big prolific one. I have yet, and usually if there's a problem, I hear immediately from Melissa Kahn that they need 30 days or it's, uh, we don't really understand what you're asking, Leslie. I have not received that or anything from the right to know request. The second one was because, and I want to be very clear on this. I called the um, Martin Heldren, who chairs our ethics committee, after Ms. Schaefer's findings. And I said, what was your determination on the promposal? He said, there was a promposal. There's a process. We were told that it was followed. The process was followed. It's been a long-term process. That's what we were told in the ethics committee, that there's a process. So when I did my right to know request, I requested that I get copies of how the the promposal process works because I didn't think after talking to four school board members they had any knowledge most people didn't have any knowledge and I thought it should be more equitable than a commissioner's child it wasn't a disparagement but you know I'm a big one okay if there's a problem is can we get a solution is there a more efficient way that's where my things came and my right to know request so I leave that there I know that um, our solicitor will probably look at this and maybe Whenever our next meeting is, if it's the 13th, I'll come again and maybe you'll have some answers for me on the right to know requests. Well, Melissa Cox has got to respond. So she's okay. To, she's the right to know all. That's stuff. awesome. Okay. And I'll only, call her tomorrow. Yeah, and it only comes to me if she has a question. Okay. I usually so. get something if there's a problem and I haven't. Okay. Well, I'll follow up with her. Uh, I think Mr. Zinkowski can answer your question. Oh, sure. Um, the Democratic Party here, um, the agreement was made that anybody who was using the library for any type of activities, whoever was using that would automatically be able to use this building <coughs> as part of that agreement with the library. So whether we agree or disagree or anything, whoever was using the library was able to use this building. So that's why that was able to happen. Oh, that's where the Democratic Party meets mm -hmm. at the library? Using, okay. And that's why they came in. Um, the second thing with the proposal, I think maybe that's the issue, and I think that goes back to the ethics board, whatever was submitted there, and I know there's that issue that's probably under consideration now of what's submitted within the ethics board that can't get out because it's covered under confidentiality. Uh, he gave me no confidential information. He just said there was oh, a I process. Know, but I think there's pro process of the information that's gotten out, and I think there's information that's gotten out that has raised questions. I know to us here is information that we submitted within there that now has gotten out into the public and people have spoken about that seems as though that has breached that area of confidentiality. So that's... But I think that issue is going to be addressed by by the solicitor. Okay. I guess my problem is is that if there is a process for special treatment during prom season for anybody, then shouldn't all students be allowed to apply for that special ask? All students have been given that same opportunity. Then the school board doesn't know. Why and do I don't think any of the students knew that they could apply for this. That's all I'm asking. And if there is thing, show us on the website where to do it. And what is the process? And that's all I'm asking. And I want a copy of other people's process. I asked for the last three years. If, uh, I asked for all the proposals that wouldn't be confidential for the last three years, if it is something that we do a lot. Commissioner, if I could just respond. Sure. Uh, there is no formal process. It's always been with the Radnor Police Department that if the request is reasonable, whether it is a proposal, a wedding proposal, a ride along, removing a turtle from a person's yard, <laughs> taking bats out of people's houses, we do it 90% of the time, 99% of the time, there's no written police report. The officer has his or her own authority to do it, providing they let the supervisors know. And we've done that continuously and we will continue to do it. Whether it's a commissioner's child or anybody else's child, if they live in Radnor and we can do it and it's going to generate goodwill, we're going to do it. 
but I, but I will say that the information that came out in regard in regards to that specific information is so wrong. It's 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 outrageous of how, how wrong. I talked to Martin. Her. He said there was a process. Right, but I just say that because I can't speak to what was testified to in the ethics part. All I can say is a generic thing. It is so wrong of what the information. One uh, wouldn't know uh, that, and I could say it's so uh, wrong. I'm just too. I'm just wondering of how the story that someone got out that I heard from someone who filed the complaint, how that got out. All right, well, we can go ahead and move along. I don't know what you're talking about. Any other public comments? <laughs> Maybe we will move along. Dan Sherry, um, it, it seems like what, what, the, what the manager is, is uh, discussing there is is how this information that was part of this confidential inquiry that Martin Helbring only brought up confidentiality, I think, three times at that meeting, somehow got out and now became the gravamen of a complaint against a sitting commissioner. That's the breach of confidentiality that should make everybody very concerned. As I talked about in previous meetings, the ethics board doesn't have subpoena power. All it has is this veneer of come, talk to us, be forthcoming, and we will keep the information confidential. And nevertheless, it's breached. <coughs> Clearly it's breached. Unless Doug McCone, I don't believe this for a second, is some type of, what, cyber criminal, cat burglar, and gets it himself. It somehow ends up in his possession and then gets affixed to a complaint that Doug McCone files against Rich Booker. That's the concern. I have major issues with the ethics board in terms of how they've conducted themselves in these investigations uh, involving, uh, let's see, uh, Bill Spingler, Jim Higgins, John Nagel, and Lane Paul Schaefer. But this is just sort of the cherry on top of the proverbial Sunday that it's part of the Lane Paul Schaefer investigation. It gets leaked. It becomes the gravamen of a complaint against Rich Booker. I think that is where um, uh, township manager's concerns were. Do I uh, accurately state that, Mr. Zienkowski? Hopefully so. I see a slight nod. Um, now, let's talk about, um, about uh, Mr. R and the uh, assertions that uh, the uh, township solicitor deserves credit in terms of uh, Mr. R resigning. That may very well be. I can tell you that one of the perhaps best ways to the extent a disgusting criminal pervert can be incentivized to do something would be for this board to tell the disgusting criminal pervert that he is no longer the president of the board of commissioners that would be a pretty good way at telling the public that this guy whatever he is he doesn't represent the highest elected position in Radnor township and you know who took that position again I don't know what people knew or didn't know because no one's an answering questions. I know that Commissioner Clark, Commissioner Booker, and Commissioner Curley all voted on October 9th to pick a new president. Just open the nominating process. No names were proposed. Just open the nominating process. Somebody other than R. Blocked by Nagel, Higgins, Schaefer. Okay. Does that sound like putting pressure on somebody to step down? Now, subsequent to that, it's been reported in the press that Commissioner Clark and Commissioner Booker got an attorney, apparently pro bono, to put pressure on R to step down. That's pressure. That's pressure that was not coming, it appears, from Commissioner Higgins, Commissioner Schaefer, Commissioner Nagel, who were all members of Commissioner R's party. A party, by the way, that I'm also a member of, Democrat. Okay? That's a failing. That's a failing, and it is incompatible with the first word that appears on the Radnor Democratic Party's masthead, which is accountability. There needs to be some soul searching in that regard. There truly does. Now, just a couple more things about Commissioner R and this now vacancy that's been created. I said that you will be soliciting names, Commissioner Schaefer, and I wanted to speak to that briefly. We have a nice bipartisan tradition in Radnor Township of certain commissioners stating that if they want to become permanent commissioners when they're candidates, they should not be appointed to the interim spot. There's a Democrat who did that, John Fisher, and there's a Republican who did that, Luke Clark. There was a vacancy created in the third ward. I'll just use the most recent example first. Commissioner Clark specifically came into the meeting and said, I don't want to be the interim commissioner. I think it's an unfair advantage. His opponent, I won't name her by name, she would not go that route. She wanted to be interim commissioner. Commissioner Schaefer supported her, as did Nagel, as did Higgins. And she became interim commissioner, and she lost in the election. 
I think one of the reasons why she lost is because many people view that as an unfair advantage. So, my statement to the public, to the extent it should be considered, perhaps it should, perhaps it shouldn't, is if you are interested in being the full-time 7th Ward Commissioner, try and think how the public will view it if you try to go for the interim position and be appointed by the board and then run as a quasi-incumbent. It's not fair. Instead, merely take a placeholder, be a custodian for a limited period until the next election takes place, and then allow the public to decide between two candidates who I'm sure will be qualified and vetted, even though the Renner Democratic Party needs to do a better job vetting its candidates given, uh, let's see, Bill Spengler recently awaiting, uh, it sounds like a resentencing hearing in terms of multiple attacks on a 103-year-old with a mental disability. Uh, Commissioner R, Commissioner R, R who is, it appears, adding to his charges every single day for child pornography and a couple of other dubious people. Sorry you're upset with the comments, Mr. Nagel. Please um, <coughs> control yourself. It was reported that at the Chair, League of Women Voters there was an outburst. Five minutes. Thank you, I will wrap up. Thank I, you. Would, I would respectfully submit that, uh, please, if you are interested in submitting your name, please do it in a caretaker capacity rather than a desire to become a uh, full-time, full-term commissioner. Is there Thank any you. other public comment? All right, we're gonna go ahead and get on with the business of this board. And I am going to hand it over to you, our finance director, Bill White. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I'll, I'll start by just thanking those of you who were able to make it out tonight. I know these special meetings are always difficult to make it to. Um, I also recognize the fact that it's difficult to fit this kind of discussion into our regular agendas, which are usually quite full as it is. So I, I do appreciate the time tonight to step through this. Uh, following your direction, I'll, uh, I'll keep this at a high level and informational um, informational only tonight uh, what I'll also do is um, if I can figure out the technology to make it work right I'll do uh, like a voiceover of the presentation and we'll upload that to the website as well for the commissioners who weren't able to make it tonight as well as anyone from the public who wants to watch it um, I will uh, I'll step to this I'll be a brief toward the front end because I think some of it's repeat from prior years or at least I hope it is um, and then we'll get into a little bit more uh, substance when we talk about uh, an introduction of a possible funding uh, plan uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll step through the capital plan as it's included in the, the township managers recommended budget that was published uh, the, the second week of October the, the dates escaping me at this moment um, but uh, almost a month ago uh, we'll step through the de departmental capital. I'll spare everyone going through vehicle by vehicle, um, but I'll at least point you to where it's at in the budget so you can go and look at it if you haven't done so already. I'll do the same with the infrastructure and long-term capital. Uh, and then we'll get into the funding situation as it exists now, uh, the funding gap that exists, and then I'll talk about a, um, a funding proposal, and then we'll talk about timing and next steps. Um, so let me jump over to the, um, the township manager's recommended budget. Um, well, I worked on my screen. So, uh, there we go. Dramatic pause. Um, so this is the the five-year capital plan. Uh, it's it begins on page 158 of the document. Um, it's organized into as it has been in prior years based on sources and uses. So it identifies by fund where we get our money from uh, in order to either purchase capital or install. Uh, capital improvements. Uh, we have our, our sanitary sewer fund, which is funded through the sewer rent. We have our stormwater management fund, which is funded through the stormwater fee. We have our liquid fuels fund, which is funded by uh, state and funded entirely through state um, state uh, intergovernmental revenue. Um, we have our capital improvement fund, which is basically 
an extension of our general fund. It's the catch-all of every other capital project the township wants to do that's not otherwise funded by one of these special sources. Um, and then the last two, we have a park and open space fund uh, that has been mostly become a debt service fund to, uh, to pay down on the debt issued for the open space purchases. Uh, but if there were no debt, there would be a dedicated revenue that could be used for uh, park and open space improvements. Uh, and then we have the Willows Fund, uh, which is an enterprise fund. It, and we've had our discussions over the last couple of years. It's in a little bit of flux right now. We don't have anything identified in the plan right now, um, which is probably a, a good, good place to stop and just uh, take a step back. When, when the manager uh, and the department heads, when we were putting the budget together, um, we were careful this year in what we included in the budget document and what we didn't. And there are things that weren't included on purpose uh, because we did include some of them a year ago and um, we were being sensitive to some of the, the, the um, criticisms from uh, some of the commissioners that once items appear in a document that's published, it becomes harder to take them out. So the desire at the time was that those things be left out up front and included later at the board's discretion or yeah, the board's uh, direction. So uh, at specific to the, the overall funding of the capital program, the township manager's budget says basically, hey, we got a gap, we need to fill it. We didn't put a proposal in how to fill it. Um, the same with the Willows and our discussions about improvements to the mansion. We've had separate conversations about how that could be funded. Uh, we didn't bake any of that into the document itself, again, because we didn't want that to become, um, I guess, the launching point or something that would be harder to remove later. So uh, those were uh, specifically the, the Willows is kind of on its own separate track. So we, we left it on that track um, and didn't want to disrupt it by throwing it in here. Uh, but it is still something very much that we have to figure out how we want to fund. And hopefully the discussion we get into later about a, a potential idea helps shed some light or give some, um, hopefully we, we, we think that might be a way to go. So uh, I didn't want anyone to panic when they didn't see numbers in the Willows Fund, uh, but that's that's why there, there aren't any at this time. Um, <coughs> then uh, at the top it tells you what year. So we have each of, each of these sources and uses tables for each of the years in the plan. Um, and then the plan goes and gets into um, really at any level of detail you want to get into. You can stop at the sources and uses if you're good with that. Uh, if you want to know that the police department is replacing uh, vehicle number nine, which is a Ford Expedition used for patrol, you can go in and find vehicle nine, 2018 Ford Explorer, and find out how much um, how much we're buying it for and what the, the replacement plan is at 75,000 miles and so on. So. Um, each year, the capital plan itself has kind of grown in detail uh, out of requests for the, the information. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not gonna go through it all. I'll, uh, I'll basically, I won't get into any more detail there unless there are specific questions later. Um, but that's, that's how the plan is organized. Um, in terms of how we spend the money, uh, going into last year's budget, we, we took the capital program and we, we split it up into two buckets. We have the, the what, we, what we coined the phrase of pay as you go uh, and then pay as you use. So the pay as you go uh, is exactly what, as it suggests, is that we're using current resources or money we're anticipating generating in 2018 to pay for those assets um, because they are short-lived assets they are, um, generally speaking, they are the moving fleet, which we get anywhere from three to five to seven years worth of useful life out of, uh, or, de or um, departmental equipment, which is mostly public works. That's the, um, the tractors, the dump trucks, the, the trailers, the backhoes, the, the, uh, the larger um, mowing vehicle, uh, mowing tractors for the, uh, the large fields and, and so on. Um, as well as IT. Um, and then we have the pay as you use group, which is our infrastructure improvements, our township buildings and grounds, our municipal parking lots, um, 
as well as um, any kind of special assessment improvements, which the township hasn't done for more than a decade, uh, park improvements, and any kind of um, movement on the trail network plan that was, um, the study was completed uh, roughly two years ago. But the reason why this group was segregated is because these assets, as you can imagine, have much, much longer useful lives, which opens opportunities for different financing. Um, in some cases, it, it makes sense to finance or to borrow for those improvements. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more detail why um, uh, best practice or suggested practice in some of the um, governmental accounting groups um, say that that is a better way to go, certainly within um, the resources you have available to pay for the debt. Um, and then at the end of the day, at the bottom line, it, what this does is it calculates how much uh, tax would be needed to fund the program in order to maintain a $250,000 balance in that particular fund. We don't carry fund balances in any of the special funds. Um, at least in this document, there are cash balances in those funds, um, and those cash balances are used for the capital projects. But um, an example in the sanitary sewer fund is we also have three full-time employees, which <coughs> obviously aren't accounted for in a capital plan. So. Um, we don't commingle the operating and capital fund balances, or we don't want to suggest in the capital plan that a larger fund balance exists when much of that is needed to pay RHM or the operating side of the program. So um, the only fund that we do try to maintain some balance in is the, the general capital, uh, and that's to account for variances and um, surprise projects that may come up. Uh, we don't carry a whole lot in this, uh, this particular fund, because we have the fund balances in the general fund that the, the board has the policies um, establishing those. So um, we, don't, we don't carry heavy fund balances in two different places. We keep it all in the general fund. Uh, so that's how the, the, uh, the capital plan is organized. Again, if you want to go into um, and find out what each little, each project is and the reason why those projects are being uh, recommended, you can do that. Uh, when, when we're in a discussion more along the lines of decision making and direction, um, I think probably the best place to go with that is start by identifying the projects that the board agrees with or thinks that need to be funded. Um, and then we, we determine what, um, what the funding source would be from there. But uh, one thing that we haven't really zeroed in on uh, in our our discussions is um, what projects everybody agrees on. Uh, everyone has their projects that they agree on, but we um, we just have trouble getting them all together in a meeting and and hammering out which ones we, uh, as a group, agree to fund. Um, and we, tonight's obviously not the night to get into that, but um, it's a it's a thought that I had when I was putting this um, this discussion together. So are, are those the costs that are in the column um, road and bridge, board and commission of projects, traffic control, that, that line of numbers right there, those are the numbers you want direction from us? Yes. What or what we want to do or what we don't want to do. Yep. Uh, or some that may be not in there um, mm -hmm. because I'm, it, it's, it's an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's never a good time. It's That's not like more than likely. Yeah. It, it's, well, it's, it, and it's, it's okay. It, Cap, you can't just talk about capital in two months of the year. It's a, it's a year-long conversation, but planning for capital um, usually culminates this time of year. Um, so with that being said, I'll jump back over to the presentation, and um, we'll talk a little bit about where we are funding-wise, uh, which is... Um, come on, work. All the stuff we got wrong in the back. Yeah, it's how long. If this cord was a foot shorter, it'd be a little fast. Right. Um, so this is the uh, the pay as you go portion of the plan. So um, we've we've had a lot of discussions through the years how fortunate the township has been to realize um, unexpected increases in our business and our permitting revenue, business tax and permitting revenue. Uh, a portion of those revenues. Uh, have been allocated in the annual budgets to fund this part of the capital plan. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, this includes our short-term assets, moving fleet, and departmental, uh, and, uh, departmental capital, and IT. Um, so prior to 2010, uh, the township had utilized period periodic borrowings to fund its entire capital plan, which included this segment. Um, and then based on uh, GFOA best practice, um, the recommendations that came out of the CB FAC report in 2010, as well as the ongoing discussions and recommendation, or discussions with CARFAC, uh, as well as is our recommendation is that this be peeled out and funded with current resources, again, to match um, useful lives with the resource. So we don't want to be paying for something for 20 years that we only get three years of use out of. Um, so included in the 2018 budget is uh, a general fund transfer uh, of one point, just shy of 1.6 million, which funds, um, which when added to these other smaller sources, generates enough revenue to fund this portion of the program. So that's the, the good news is, is we have more than half of the capital funding plan, we have that kind of solved, or we have that working. And it's been working now for the better part of five years. So uh, it seems sustainable and reliable, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, and then as we've been discussing, when we switch over to the pay as you use, or the larger uh, portion, or uh, the larger asset portion of the plan, this is where no, there is no current dedicated funding source. Um, we have been fortunate to have excess revenues in prior years that have helped go towards these projects that, that has bridged the gap to get us through. Um, but I think as you, as you look at the capital plan iterations over the years, you'll see projects kind of building on top of themselves because the, the funding isn't there for those projects in say 2016. So it shows up again in 17, along with a bunch of new projects for 17, and then it just kind of keeps snow, uh, snowballing. Um, so even a year ago, we were having these conversations and we were estimating that we needed roughly a million one per year to fund this part of the capital plan. Now, if you look at the capital plan this year, um, you'll see that it's, it's a higher number by roughly a half million per year. Um, and I, I wanted to touch on the fact in the second bullet point here, uh, the, the township historically issued bonds periodically every few years um, to fund its entire capital program. Um, it stopped after the 2007 issue. Um, we don't need to get into all the reasons, but I, economics was probably the biggest um, when the revenue stopped or the revenue slowed down for a year. That coupled with the fact that at the time the township had a lot of debt, uh, a lot of recent debt outstanding, I think everyone just paused. Uh, there but wasn't another thing that once you and Bob came on board, we determined that that was really being misused so for example we were using that to buy police cars yes yeah well, uh, yeah absolutely short term yes. assets and long term debt absolutely yes um, but the practice itself of using the uh, intermittent borrowings to fund the capital program uh, had been going on for decades and you know, a lot of it was for roads and sewers as well so um, and uh, like it or not this building was part of it um, and we'll be paying for that for a long time um, and I'll get into that in a little more detail here in a moment, but um, the, the funding gap as it exists now, uh, this, is, um, this is a screenshot I actually pulled out of the budget document itself that shows the annual estimates for the projects that are included. Um, I would put an asterisk next to 2023. I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that we can anticipate that kind of drop off. It's just that the plan has not extended itself. Probably a more realistic scenario is, is that there are projects in these years that can be uh, delayed or smoothed out over the five-year period. Um, but this is these are the amounts in the different categories of capital that currently do not have, again, a dedicated funding source to pay for it. Uh, and without one, as I know, as I mentioned a moment ago, this will continue to build upon itself. Wait, can I just ask a question about sure. the park improvements number? Yep. So are those 
those are needs that we have above and beyond the needs that we identified and paid for or will pay for through the bond we took. Yes, yes, so that, that's a good point. So any of the projects that we borrowed for in the 2015-16 bond issue mm -hmm. are excluded from these numbers um, because they have a funding right. source, okay. so they don't need to be accounted for here. Um, so yeah, these would be uh, anything not included with that. Uh, the, the park improvements uh, in particular, if you'll recall, when we were discussing the bond at the time, there were, the list was this big, we ultimately borrowed for this much, so what you're seeing there is the re-inclusion of some of those projects that were pulled. And why, just wh why is there a year of no need and then a year of much larger need? Yeah, what's, um, what's a million two ninety three? Yeah. I'll, uh, it's, it's, in the, it's in the capital plan. It's one or two parks, and that's why I don't like to go off memory, but Odoricio, Odoricio, Odoricio Park. So big well, yeah. investments <coughs> that we didn't put in and the bond. Perhaps Bo Connor. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Okay. So it, uh, playground replacements, which are always pretty pricey. Uh, comfort station replacements that are pricey. Um, so yeah, if, if you go into the capital plan and get mm -hmm. to the park improvement section, you'll see in 2020 what uh, specific projects those are. Okay. Um, so, uh, an introduction of a funding proposal. Um, understanding that for tonight, this is being rolled out uh, for the first time. This, um, this is the start of the conversation. But uh, what, what we have been working on um, with CARFAC not this year because it wasn't part of what the board direction to Carfax was, but in prior years, uh, as it relates to capital funding, we had worked up um, the concept of getting back to doing smaller intermittent borrowings. Uh, in this case, we we estimated three and a half million every three years, uh, which after you pay, f oh, and those bonds are twenty-year fixed interest rate bonds. Um, uh, tax-free or tax-exempt bonds, uh, which make them even more affordable for local governments, um, that, that would generate roughly 3.3 million per year over those for the three years, or 1.1 million per year to fund the capital plan. Um, we, in putting, it, putting this proposal together, we forecasted it out through 2050, um, and that's kind of what that that sawtooth graph is showing is that um, every every third year you have a spike in balance because you've borrowed and then you spend that down over the next two years and it, it jumps back up so that's why you have the sawtooth the orange line is the amount of capital funding per year that that would fund over their, over the forecast what's the cumulative debt bill that you're on that uh, yeah and I've got I'll get into that here in a moment um, so the 3.5 million was chosen for a reason. It's, it wasn't an accident. Um, it worked out that a year ago, 1.1 million per year looked really good because uh, that was aligning with what the need looked like it was. Um, but uh, the 3.5 million lands us at, um, at slightly higher interest rates than we are today. We didn't factor much of an increase, um, which turns out to be kind of accurate. I mean, the interest rates really haven't gone, gone up. Uh, in the last year um, but the program is is that we borrow in small increments and then as we pay those down we basically refill uh, refill the bucket uh, the result is is that we have the added capital funds on an annual basis um, and the debt service obligation of the township at, uh, doesn't go much beyond where it's at today um, and I'll, I'll show that graphically here in a moment, but basically what it is, is every year we're paying down principal anyway, just as anybody does on their mortgage, for example. So we would, we pay down and then we refill it every third year back to basically today's level. So um, what that looks like over, again, this, the forecast period from 20, from today through 2050, is you can see in principle, the outstanding debt ramps itself up, but then levels itself out because once you have it, once you get through the um, the ramp up period, then you're paying as much down as you're borrowing. Once 
your principal and interest payments will be going up over the, over the same period. That's what the second graph is telling us, is that our debt, our annual debt service expense is ramping up at the same time our outstanding principal is ramping up. And then they both level out. Um, what you're seeing here on the graph to the right is that for the first couple of years, the debt service is really affordable and then it builds upon itself. Uh, and this, so it, it's capping out at rough at 2035 uh, and then levels out. And what that's saying is that in those years, uh, where the debt service principal amount per year, the expense is matching the same amount that we're adding in future years. So it's, it's leveling itself out. But that assumes the current interest rates. Uh, the interest rates aside, that you, the same effect would occur no matter what interest rates do in terms of these graphs. The, the numbers, the scale would change. It would become more expensive with higher interest rates, but the leveling off oh, yeah, would still know. occur. Right. But Bill, the, if we were to adopt this system, we're still looking at current indebtedness of $56 million, and that would continue. We would borrow 3.5 every three years, but it would not increase our $56 million number yes. because we're paying down each year. But yes. the problem I see here, it's not a problem, uh, we have a very large debt, $56 million. Exactly. And am I correct is that that's one reason why we have an A, double A, one credit rating? Or is, no. is, is that there are other reasons? have that range not, and it's not a higher rating yeah uh, well Moody's in in assigning that credit rating um, in their report says that we have uh, moderate levels of indebtedness right now um, and if if we're not increasing that indebtedness over time if, if we're maintaining that level of indebtedness Moody's will always view it as moderate unless our tax base shrinks significantly which if that happens, we have a whole new set of problems we should reevaluate the plan. And some of our issues retire in... Yes, in so... Yeah, that isn't, isn't, I remember 2020 is a, a magic number, right? So yeah, so that's that's the next slide. Um, that's why economic development is so important to this. Keep tax revenue coming in. Exactly. So the, gr the graph here on the left, this blue line represents our general fund debt obligation as it exists right now. Um, and yeah, it, we, have the, we have a significant drop off here in the next couple of years. We have another drop off in, in the mid 20s. Um, the larger drop off, Commissioner Clark, is gonna be in the park and open space fund. Right. Um, this is separate of that. They, debt, the general fund's debt expense is going to tick back up uh, in 2028. Um, and that's because of this, the way the debt was structured for this building, it, uh, it was back end loaded. So uh, right now we're paying, uh, that's a good choice. Five. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, at the time the decision was made to do that, to keep debt service level over the entire, over the township's entire debt portfolio. Uh, had, had it been a level debt service for the life of the bonds, debt in the current years would have been a lot higher. We'd be paying a lot more debt today, uh, but then the, the fall off in later years would be a lot sharper. But th it was successful in that instead of a drop off in those years, there's actually an uptick and then it remains uh, relatively stable until uh, the bonds for this building mature in 2036. And then, we, then there's a quick fall off. And the reason why there's such a quick fall off there is again, outside of the the, the library trails and parks bonds that were done in late 1516 there hasn't been any new debt general fund debt issued for the for over a decade there have been refinancing we, there's been plenty of refinancing and, and the reason why we do those is to achieve savings lower on interest lower interest rate. rates um, but that and no the only the only time we increased indebtedness through a refunding, was when we did the termination agreement on the swap. Yep. We borrowed the $4 million termination payment. Um, but that will mature in the next couple of years and it's part of this drop off. 
So the graph on the right, the orange line is added. I know the scale is a little different, so it doesn't line up perfectly, but the, the blue line is the same between the two graphs. Um, the graph on the right adds an orange line that shows what the new debt service would be with the additional capital uh, with the, the borrowing plan included. And through 2027, uh, it, it stays basically at the same level it is today. Um, I mean, slightly higher, but definitely manageable within our general fund budget. Um, there is an uptick then in 2028 that if, if you could see the gap or the, the distance between the lines, it stays the same. So the uptick here is just mirroring what's going to happen anyway. Um, and then there is some debt service growth in 2032 through 2036. Um, that's more for forecasting and, and planning purposes than it is for preciseness. Uh, obviously, a lot will change between now and then. Um, so, uh, what I mean, basically, what that says is that we could consider this plan generate roughly a million one per year to fund our this portion of our capital program and do so with not without increasing our annual debt service expense uh, which when you flow it through the bottom line our tax rate today is set to fund today's debt service level mm -hmm. if that is constant over time theoretically then tax rates for at least this purpose would remain constant over time um, so it's a way of generating some funds for capital without raising taxes. Bill, we have, as everybody knows, we have a citizens committee, CARFAC, mm -hmm. um, that helps us, helps you get through these questions, issues. Have they weighed in on this? Yeah, so this, this plan was actually baked into the budget proposal a year ago. Um, it, it didn't really see the light of day it didn't really get a lot of deliberation um, because there was some concerns about the process and again like I mentioned earlier there were concerns that once it made its way to the document it was going to be hard to pull out and the board really having it has had not given us direction at the time so well, Leo did try to present he did yes yes um, so that's a long way of answering it yes Carfac has been heavily involved in the development of this entire plan and the forecast. Uh, they they have not looked at it in a year, um, so it's probably worth uh, sending it back and at least asking. For a tweak. Yeah, just to, to blow the dust off it, uh, update it with, um, well, with the, the interest rate should be current, but update it with the new capital plan as it exists. Um, and then once we have an idea on what the specific projects are, if we have consensus from the board on what you feel is worthy of funding, then we can really um, drill it down and and make it make it fairly precise because um, there's not a whole lot of magic in the numbers. Uh, the risks are market risks with interest rates and as it pertains to the, the rising cost of doing these projects. Um, it, if, if we keep the borrowing level over time, and I'm jumping ahead, but um, I'll, I'll let me jump back the to rate, that here in a moment. You said there's a risk on rates. If the rates are fixed, I think they're 20 year fixed. So where's the risk? The risk is every three years you're going back out into the market and you're paying whatever interest rate the market is offering at that time. So if, if they do go up over time, the cost of those the program becomes a little bit more expensive over time. So what about the risk of projects that we don't anticipate right now that aren't in this five, ten year plan? So we're you know, this is a lovely plan that gives us a manageable debt level over time for the things we know about, but you know, we need a new, I don't know what, bridge or new building. And then now we're in a position where we can't take out more debt or don't want to take out any more debt. So, um, yes. <laughs> and, and what I did on this slide is, is I took my notes from a year ago with our conversations with Carfac 
um, and I, I added to them a little bit. Um, so if you'll just bear with me, I'll, let me just step through. Um, I've, I've talked uh, in detail about what the strengths of the program are. Um, it does generate money for the capital program. It does so at today's expense levels, which ultimately roll down to the fact that um, this can be done without raising taxes uh, at today's interest rates. Uh, some of the weaknesses of the plan uh, are that borrowed funds are fixed for whatever the, the, the period is. So if we're assuming 20 years, as soon as we borrow it, we own it for 20 years. Uh, unless we get a windfall, uh, it's, you can't undo it. Um, so that's, that's one of the, the weaknesses. Um, it is more expensive because we are paying um, not only the cost of issuance each time, uh, but there, uh, we're also paying interest on the plan. Um, that is offset a little bit by some of the, the, the opportunities um, or even the last bullet point under the, the strengths is that, uh, or sorry, the, the second to last bullet point, that we're matching the benefit or the asset life with those who are paying the annual taxes that are funding it. So as we pay taxes as residents, we're also enjoying the benefit of the new asset. Bill, on to that last weakness, though, more expensive than cash, but you, don't you have to consider the opportunity cost of that cash? Sure. Uh, really, what I'm referring to there is more of a direct real estate millage uh, that, would, that the board would say, all right, we're going to raise millage by X, and that is dedicated to... The, the, the funding of the capital program. Uh, in that case, there's not a whole lot of opportunity costs outside of what else that millage could be used for, but um, that would be a deliberation for the board. <laughs> uh, some of the opportunities is it does, it does force prioritization of projects, um, and it limits the added capital projects that are outside of the plan. Um, to your point, Commissioner Schaefer, that that is both an opportunity and a threat um, because as I, the last bullet point on the threat is it does say it, I, it could limit the opportunity to borrow for larger capital outside of this program. It, we cert, by, by no means would we be restricted from borrowing more money uh, for larger outside projects or projects that could be funded with other sources. So we have, we all know we have a a sanitary sewer system that is in need of lots of capital improvements uh, starting with the reimbursement of the general fund for the ones this year um, that is outside of this so if we had three three and a half million for this program and we decided seven million I'm making the number up so um, don't please don't write that in paper um, <laughs> if it's whatever the number is for sanitary sewer uh, it could be ten and a half million Seven million is going to be funded by the sewer rent. The three and a half million is funded by the general fund, um, and stormwater factors in as well. Uh, so we always have the ability to fund or borrow additional dollars with the monies generated by the sanitary sewer or stormwater funds. Um, this I, I did wanted to want to point out in the opportunities that this plan would capitalize on the township's uh, strong credit rating. We are double A one. Uh, AA1 steady. Um, that rating was just affirmed by Moody's uh, a month ago. Uh, we had a, um, uh, they, they called as they periodically do and just say, hey, we'd like to talk to you about how you're doing. They have a very set list of things that they want from us. It's, um, it's, a, it's a blueprint that we go over uh, with each refunding, with each new issue, and with each uh, review that they do. Uh, so we administratively we have the templates already <laughs> ready to go so when they call we generate the reports and ship it off um, so they affirm that that credit rating at double a one steady uh, that is one notch below triple a um, the in the report and i'll, I'll share it um, with the board and uh, i can i can publish it to the website as well it is a public document um, moody's goes in, into some detail about what makes it what puts us in the AA1 category and what would hold us back from AAA. Um, quite honestly, the things holding us back from AAA aren't necessarily things we have control over. Um, the, the primary one that they cite 
is the reliance on the business taxes. Um, given that the business taxes are um, subject to economic uh, swings, uh, Moody's just puts that in a category of watch out. Um, obviously, if we wanted to, to hinge that risk, we would we would need much higher real estate tax rates and not be so reliant on businesses, and that's not a real popular position to be in it either. So again, it, AAA, it might be something in the future. To the manager's point, uh, strong economic development, redevelopment, business tax base growth would go a long way there. But um, at any rate, for the purposes of tonight's discussion, AA1 is not bad. We're getting excellent interest rates as a result. Um, this program does carry with it the, writ, the interest rate risk that we talked about, uh, as well as inflation risk. Um, if What I'm referring to there is if the program does not expand over time in funding, as projects become more expensive to install, obviously our, our project list will have to shrink. Um, but there's no obligation to take out the, the every three years. So if, if interest rates shot up, that board, whoever's sitting, could make the decision, we're going to have to delay all these projects. That's exactly right. So that, that was one of the strengths of the program is that every three years, right. the board has an opportunity to revisit the plan, mm -hmm. make sure it's either on track, off track, does it need to be expanded, pulled back. Um, so it, it gives the board, and it, it, so this board doesn't bind future boards into a plan that is set in stone, they will have opportunities uh, to evaluate it themselves. As we talked about though, the one thing is is that it would obligate future boards to pay debt that has already right. been taken out, but the, the counter to that is, is that the debt, the debt that has been taken out has been used to fund some improvement that taxpayers are benefiting from anyway. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not sunk, it's not lost, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's being used as it was borrowed for. There's also opportunities to offload some of our liabilities too, as well, that may involve into our capital program that we look at. What do you mean by that? Uh, like our sanitary sewer system. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, talking about selling our sewers. Right? Yes. There are many buyers out there that would it's, want our This sewers. is a wave that's happening across the country um, because one is it's, it's expensive. Um, most communities, and, and again, straight to lay it all up cards on the table, there are not many political bodies willing to raise rates high enough to cover the expenses of what it takes. And we are an aging system. Uh, we have major expenses that are lying ahead of us. The expense now that just took place at Skunk Hollow, when our guys are telling me we have a break from Skunk Hollow, so if you know where Skunk Hollow is, and you know the distance between there and the Wawa on Lancaster Avenue, knowing that that system any day can go, that is a major expense for us. Um, and that our system, again, can go at any particular time, and the expenses, and you see what Steve has proposed, which is about 15 million, that doesn't even cover anything. So again, you have an aging system, the costs are only gonna keep going up, and these emergencies, they cost more. And again, every year the costs keep going up and up, and like we've seen with some of these emergency repairs that we've had to do, again, you can only cut these things short, and it, it keeps going and going. So these are ones that there's some hard decisions to make right. and to well look that, at. And that's a separate well, discussion. Those, I agree. They're not even in our capital budget, those costs. Those are in our sanitary sewer budget. Yes. And they're identified in the capital plan yes. under the sanitary sewer right. group, mm -hmm. but Correct. they're not part of this this particular fund. They right. wouldn't be Correct. funded under this scenario. Well, it, yeah. but, but they could but again, but they are a jump. But there are conversation under the capital plan, though, and I think that is probably one of the major discussions we're still going to have to have. So the benefits there would be that Aqua takes on the live. I'm assuming it's Aqua because I know or, they just or tried. Some, or somebody else. Correct. Okay, because I know they just tried to buy the Chester Water Authority, and that it, it didn't go through, but they made the play. They so, bought uh, Linfield Limerick. Yeah. Yes. So um, there's been a handful. Yes, mm -hmm. there are, been. and this is in, the, in, in not only in our state but throughout the country. Sure. This is a movement. 
So the be so the benef uh, the benefit for us would be, I assume, an infusion of tens of millions of dollars in, in cash. We don't have to worry about it. The detriments would be we lose control because then they can do whatever they want, essentially, right? And they can charge well, whatever regulated. they want. Well, they're regulated. They're, the they're regulated, and the state just put something in about a year ago, I believe. But we just saw that can, so, that oh, can be controlled, but also too as part of that negotiations. You have the ability to say we we need to make sure we buffer that in, but that's a whole part of the process sure. that I think. <coughs> just yeah. to think about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the, the the legislation adopted by the state about a year ago um, yep. referred to not only the, the rate, how the rates are limited, but also how the assets are valued in the the acquisition. Okay. Up until that legislation was adopted, it was always on a, a cost basis, which mm -hmm. is cost minus depreciation, now it's uh, at a fair market value, uh, which changes the games for municipalities pretty substantially. But, and that's fair. Um, I guess I'm also thinking about their actual handling of any infrastructure improvements. You know, where one of my neighbors is here, we've had a couple meetings now, which has been mm -hmm. much appreciated. My experience, and you tell me if I'm wrong, is, you know, they want to do Midland Avenue, let's say, they're going to do it when they want to do it, right? And that's going to be it. Well, but that's all part of the discussion sure. that you have to say, look, here are the top priorities that we know are bad. These are ones that have to be, if we decide, these must be done now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. within this window of time. This, these are top priorities right now. And they have been priorities. And then these are the rates because, again, too, you've got some residents, one, fixed incomes, two, that don't use a whole lot. Sure. So you want to make sure you protect there, but then also you also to have some high users that again too how you know those are the ones where the rates should be, and that goes to based on people who use electricity, high end users of electricity, they pay more than those that don't. So again, that's all built within. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure this is a, is a real sensible political solution because I can see our t our taxpayers complaining if we were to do this, and I know this is a, almost a theoretical discussion. Mm -hmm. oh, I think this I, is one that I could see uh, our taxpayers if we did this saying to us, "You, our my my sewer rate has tripled in the last 18 months or 24 months, and that's because you sold out to a private company, and you didn't want you elected officials did not want the responsibility of looking us in the eye and saying your rates have to go up. Instead, you sloughed it off to this private company, and second of all." private company is going to have a nice healthy profit margin in there, which the township of Radnor doesn't now charges its taxpayers. So I'm not so sure this is a viable choice. You, you have the control to set what that rate will be, and you have the ability to negotiate, because there's nobody that's forcing you to, to make this decision unless the terms you, are acceptable to you. However, if you look at what you would have to raise rates to, it would be interesting to see how, how well, and I'm not saying this, but I would like to see the intellectual board turn around because you you would have to change you would have to that number would be astronomical. Don't we well, have an obligation to hear from them? You're absolutely right. I think you you got to be able to hear it. Well, just just to throw it out there, I mean, so for and this is just forecast. This is just what's in there, but there is a call at least the the proposed budget as it is for 2019 has a 66.95 percent increase in the sewer fund. Okay, so. In order to meet our obligations, so I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, we're, but we're not proposing that. That's just the number that sits. That's there. a number that's in there to make the numbers add up. Yeah, that's in terms of right. what we need to do. Yeah, I, right. I get that. algebra, right. but the point is, those are the numbers that we're. <laughs> you know, not that we're going to have to do that. Not that we would ever do 66 percent. But well, that's how, what's. How in are it. we going to do that? This well, is how. But see, it goes back to Jim. This you're going to make these repairs. You're going to have to charge. But if you go to like a, let's say you do this in theory as a private customer. If I'm not using as much, that means I'm not paying as much. So it basically, it goes down to the user fee. So if I use very little, I'm not going to be paying it. But if you go ahead and assess this across the whole system, those who don't use that much are going to pay a lot more than what they may be utilizing. So now the balance of the equity is really, I think you have an imbalance of how that's going to be utilized. The, right. the yeah. tendency of that. Right, across. Something to think about. Yeah, I mean, the other, just. Yes. Um, the discussion about the, the percentage increase, that assumes that we're using cash right. to do a project. We always have the option of borrowing. 
Right. Okay. Correct. Smoothing that increase out over a longer period. If nobody knows, I can look it up. Do we know how much Limerick was bought for? 73 to 75 million dollars. But they have a tree of the board, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but that, that was the number. Yeah, it's not comparable. It's not apples and oranges. Actually, um, I, could, I could share also, uh, Moody's did a publication um, that I think it was Michael Wolf shared with me. Um, uh, I can send that off to the board too. There's a couple case studies in there. Yeah. And Moody's does a good job of. Long, is there any long term? There's some that happened a few years, uh, quite a number of years ago, yes. Um, and those, those are interesting to read because they're usually stories of how the government itself did not handle the proceeds real well and are kind of back in the same position they were before. Uh, but um, they're, in that, they're in a position now without having the, the sewer system. But they didn't really use the... the but more, I, what I'd be more interested in seeing is it always, in the short term, it's very appealing. It's the long term when there is not the same type of pressure that electeds have to keep costs down when you have a private entity and they have to make a profit. Yes. So over the long term, there's pressure that will step in that we don't have at, in the public realm. And it tends to just, it, it ends up with higher rates for, for the user. Well, and I think it goes back to I think what John said. I think you've got to hear the process because really without hearing it, you can juggle it all over. But I think when you hear it, then you're able to make a dec decision based on it's all out there and then you can calculate it because it may come out to say it's a bad deal for the township. Or it comes out to say, how do we not do this? Right. Because all these protections are built into what, Jim, you're talking about exactly. All these protections have to be built in. And something that... When we all aren't here, somebody else can pick up and say, oh, it is crystal clear, there's a problem. 20 years down the road, these rates, these rates don't match up. All right, so did you have more on the regular capital funding? I, I just wanted to finish up. Actually, I had one slide left. Um, talk about the timing a little bit, um, just to make sure that, that we know um, that the reason why, the, the primary reason why the capital plan is, is part of the budget process is because the board only has one shot every year to affect millage rates. Um, so if, if the board is resolute on not adjusting millage rates for 2018, the capital discussion can, can span beyond the next couple of weeks. It's not like, it's not like we're forced to make a decision if by the end of November. Months. If, if, if the board, well, if, if the board decides, look, we're not adjusting real estate taxes, then we're, not. we're kind of back to the drawing board on how we're going to fund capital anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that could be a longer discussion. Um, because at any point, the board can decide to issue an ordinance to go out to and issue bonds. And that could be done in the spring, that could be done in the summer, that could be done in the fall. Uh, as long as those bonds are, are not tied to millage rates, it can happen at any point. So I, I know there's been a lot of discussion about trying to, to get the capital done within the budget period. Uh, that would be ideal, but it's not like it's, it's, we're forced to. Um, the, the only thing we are forced to do, or we, the, the board, is forced to do is set millage rates for 2018. Um, that being said, the budget ordinance will be introduced on November 27th. Uh, it can still be adjusted that night. We're just advertising for the, the public hearing and adoption at the November 11th meeting. I'm sorry, December 11th meeting. So um, the, one, the one note I'll make to that is... Um, Before you move on to that, though, when that discussion we just had about sewers has other influences that we have no control of. Um, you know, there's this ongoing battle within RHM and Springfield that may need to actually construct a new intersect. Yes. That alone, you know, would cascade back to our sewer rates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to be cognizant. There are forces out there that we have zero control. Yeah, well, local governments are always the, uh, the bottom of the food chain. And usually that's, <laughs> at the end of the day, that's where the funding False. Yeah, it's, it's up, unfortunately, it's up to you guys to figure it all out. Did, didn't we talk about that hookup fee? 
that everyone else has that we don't have? Is that something? Yes, uh, that that's an ordinance change that we can introduce yeah. tomorrow. I mean, I let's do it. I don't see any downside there, personally. I mean, it's we're late, we're late the game at this point. I think but Steve's ready to go with that. Yeah. All right. Well, we can make sure so look for that. that. Um, time to catch Cooper. Oh. <laughs> no, it depends <laughs> how the meeting's going downstairs. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the one note I will say that we, we will need to marry up uh, by the end of the year is if, if no decision's made on how to fund the capital, what we'll do with the actual appropriations as they appear in the budget is we'll zero those out. Mm -hmm. For this part of the plan, just so we're not including appropriations that aren't funded in the in the final adopted budget, but that that's more of a, a nuance uh, than, than anything else. Um, so uh, that's that's it. Um, okay, I just want to clarify. So that you presented an option tonight with this funding stream that would come from periodic small borrow. Other options that are out there are to not do capital funding, to call back projects and, and make the budget smaller. You know, pick which projects we could live without. Mm -hmm. Or to um, so adjust the expense part. Yeah. Or, I mean, typically the way we've done this was it has been a little seat, seat of the pants. What do we have in surplus? And what can we afford from this wish list to pay for what we have in surplus? Now, doing that has caused us to not put extra funding into our pension and to our OPEB. Um, but capital is one of the sanctioned mm -hmm. um, uses for that surplus money. Um, and of course, that's not. It ha we have been lucky to have money in that surplus every year, but that's not guaranteed. So it's not right. a good long-term plan. But that is an option to continue along that see the pants, let's hope we have a good surplus next year, too. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, there are capital expenses that we can pay for by reallocating budget items. Mm -hmm. For instance, the willows when we went through those million dollars where we were just reallocating money mm -hmm. without you know ca cash that we have on hand in other accounts basically yep. so those are all other options for some capital funding none of those other options are a long-term solution oh, well one that's dependable right but um, I, I, usually where we land is some combination of all of the above mm -hmm. so um, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but the, the one problem, and we've, we've kind of seen it now, it, nowhere more obvious than the sanitary sewer fund, but in other areas too, where pushing the expense off or reducing the expense doesn't mean it goes away. Right. It, it just becomes a bigger problem at some point in the future. Um, so that is another short-term solution. Um, if we're trying to come up with a plan that is sustainable for the long term, um, it, the and again, this is where the, the board needs to, to come together on what is what it, what are the projects. But once you get to that point, then we've decided those are the projects, and that's really what we should fund. And, and in all cases, it's going to require um, some sort of additional right. revenue of some sort. Um, right. And there are also uh, other options too. We talked about once before: is assets, sale of assets. But we do have some parcels that you know, the board need to decide: are they? critical for us to hold anymore or not. Um, so that's another op option for us to look at too. Do we but the revisit that and look at the inventory of real estate that we have and properties? And is it essential that we hold some slivers of land that at some point in time people gave us or whatever? Do we need to have some yeah. of these pieces we of have land? Those too. We have a whole study on that. Too. Correct. And that's done. Gathering so dust for four years. Yeah. Well, uh, we could try. No, it was, there was one last year, too. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it was reviewed. We just, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so for me, I mean, like, I mean the two things I've been thinking about are the Willows, how we're going to fund that. I think that that's the priority, personally. That's the priority and the Midland Avenue sewer project because I think that's the next emergency that's going to cost twice as much if we don't deal with it. So um, those are my two as to think about how we're going to do that. And that's Midland's a million. And then the Willows is a million plus the reallocated sources for our monies, from what I understand. Yeah. So well, obviously, under your plan, we're raising a million dollars. 
one or the other and you know I'm, I'm not sure I'm trying to reconcile this. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a million we have found a million and reallocated and then it's the seven hundred that we don't have money for what for And I hope as Luke is like that million because we know that once we get under the ground, I'm sure there are things when people built that said, I'll just throw it sure. over there or throw it over here. From it's going to get worse when we get under the ground, oh, so we may no. as well plan for more that we yeah. aren't going yeah. to see or find underneath there. But that um, one's that's long overdue. Can I ask a question? The, the 3.5 million every three years, that did not take into account the 700. We'd, we'd be short on the willows if we did the entire. That is correct. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. Uh, year one could be 4.5 million, and a million gets carved out for the willows, or mm -hmm. any variation there. Mm -hmm. Or where the board could say, look, it's 3.5 million, a million's going to the willows, and we have 2.5 for everything else. Um, again, probably mm -hmm. somewhere in between is where, where we should land. But, okay. Um, I, I'd like to point one thing out. I'm, I'm all in favor of the willows, doing what we can to save that. Um, I'd like to point out we've done a great job with parks and trails in this township. We have a long history of supporting them. I think it's time that our board look at sidewalks as an essential. We have problems in many locations, every ward in the township, where we have really extremely risky places where people have to walk to get to a grocery store or get to a restaurant. Um, John, you have one in Fifth Ward, Roberts South Roberts Road. Road. Yeah. Um, so, and can I just stop you? I, yeah. I made a commitment to the commissioners that weren't here that we wouldn't really deliberate the merits of okay. what we're going to spend. Okay. We would just really. That'll be for our next meeting. Right. Yep. Good. That's so fine. I just want to make sure. We're just getting the options to how to pay for these things. That, yeah, um, we have to have another detailed discussion about what we want to spend money on. But now we know how we would pay for it if we decide to spend it. The, well, the options for paying. Um, yeah. So you're, are you all finished? I We're all good? All right, would, in, would anybody like to make a public comment before we finish up? Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Christina Peroni. Thank you for hearing that you guys are trying to support the Willows. We certainly appreciate that. That was a great presentation and the fact that you figured out how to get that money and, and have to evaluate it every three years, I think is a huge asset. So you're not locking in future boards, which I think is terrific. Um, not to point out the negative, but the good news is we have a million dollars and you guys know that I sent you a copy of that contract. But I just want to make sure so there are no surprises. I did send you a budget of what we think we're going to need until we're self-sufficient so that that's not a surprise. And the other part, I just want to make sure that you realize is that the first contribution of that million dollars is in um, 250,019, and then 520, and then 22, another 250. So I just want to make sure that you guys know that that million dollars was staggered, and so you'd have to have a short-term loan, and then it would be immediately paid back it could be January 1, it's paid back. But just so you know, that was the time frame. And I'm sure you know that to build it in, but I want to make sure there's no surprises and you know about the carrying costs. So thank you, I appreciate you guys considering it and we hope to have a good discussion, I guess, mm -hmm. next meeting. Is that? I think we have to put it on next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and can we have the time. Right, and can we have the MOO on there too, the Memorandum of Understanding? that as well. Whether to we'll discuss it with Paul. Right? Yeah. Well, Cause we ha I haven't gotten any feedback on that, so. Well, the contents of that depend on what we decide to do right. in terms of funding. Correct. So we right. can't right. decide okay. on that sure. until we decide upon sure. the, in that is our commitment to fund sure. the thing. Right. So we sure. have to figure out who we have to vote for that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Any other public comment? Jane Yelly, um, Rosemont in Conestoga Village. Um, I just, I've been here a long time, and if you keep putting stuff off time after time after time, someone is going to have to pay the piper. So if we could do it in a much more level fashion where we take a, the chunk from the Willows to the fire department, or whatever it is, one of these days someone's got to pay for this. 
So, and I mean, let's put our big girl pants on and our big boy pants on because, you know, we have property that we have that's falling apart. We have sewer systems that are falling apart. We have stormwater problems. They're not going away. And if it keeps raining the way it's raining now, they're really not going to go away. So I, I just really think that a, a, an overall look at the whole process has to be done and say, okay, I know this is going to be painful, folks, but we've, we've put off the piper for this long, and the bill is coming due. And that's just, you know, the way I look at it. Any other comments? Public comment? All right. Um, Let's do it One, if I may, just for the next meeting, um, we'll try to keep off as much stuff that we can to push to the last meeting. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Is public comment over? <laughs> she just dropped it. I'm sorry. It's adjourned. Go ahead. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Don't distract me. Sorry. I have a suggestion about, I'm so sorry. I do have a suggestion about the sewers. I floated it out to a few people. Um, We've got a hundred. No, I have. We've no, got I said no pun intended because you floated it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, sorry. we've got to look at it as like a hundred year in infrastructure investment. Uh -huh. If you were to um, go out for a bond issue for um, the sewers, talk to Steve. What's his budget? What does he need to do over the next five years or so? There's a lot of projects that need attending. If you were to if you were to issue a bond and it were less than $10 million, I think you guys get the better rate if it's under $10 million. Yeah, the bank right? qualified like the rate, yeah. Thank you. So we just did one. Bank qualified at the school district, 1.99%. That's some pretty cheap money. Yeah. My suggestion would be to pay the interest of the uh, bond with the sewer fee. There are sewer fees already quite high. You're not going to be able to generate enough money from jacking up the sewer fee to actually do the kind of infrastructure we need. but you might be able to pay off the interest, and it's a long-term investment. So I just, um, I actually tried to find you one day, Bill, to mention this to you, but it, it may be the way to get a chunk of money, bank qualified, some pretty cheap money, use the sewer fee to pay the interest, and pay down the bond over time until we can kind of get ahead of some of these big projects that are have jumped up all of a sudden from everywhere. So that's my suggestion. Got it. Thanks. All right, you're coming. Um, Suggestion: We'll try to hold off what we can to the last meeting of the month. But just suggestion to the board is possible. You know, we've got two pieces: operating and capital. Whether or not you want to address operating first or capital, I'll mention that before. Which one do you want to try to address first, capital or operating? Well, I mean, the capital is a more difficult discussion. All right, then we'll put so we'll, we'll put that we up first. That first. Okay, it's fine. And we'll do that on the first one. Okay. All right, we're going to move. So move. All right. I handed my empty. I handed my empty.